Hello, I am Dr. Nisha Deshpande. I am a pediatric neurologist practicing in Pune, Maharashtra in India. Today I am going to talk about pediatric epilepsy. What is epilepsy? Epilepsy is the fourth most common neurological disorder which affects almost 65 million people worldwide. It is characterized by repeated seizures. Seizure is a sudden alteration in behavior or awareness which is temporary and which happens because of a change in the electrical activity in the brain. Now what exactly happens during a seizure? A seizure has grossly three parts. One is the beginning of the seizure, then the middle of the seizure and the end of the seizure. Beginning of the seizure we call it either a prodrome or an aura. Now remember prodrome is a phase which is not included as part of the seizure. On the contrary aura is something which is counted as the part of the seizure. Prodrome is a phase which usually happens in the beginning of the seizure which lasts for sometimes few minutes, few hours or even few days. The patient comes to know that probably he is going to have a seizure sometimes few hours or few days prior to the exact episode. On the contrary, sometimes there is no prodrome or no beginning phase absolutely. It differs in patients. Now this phase of the beginning, it has some physical changes and it also has some emotional or behavioral changes in the form of some weird sensation, feeling different, sometimes lightheadedness, some racing thoughts going on inside the brain and some physical changes in the form of nausea, numbness, restlessness, irritability. Again, this could last for few hours or days or they could just not be there at all. This is the beginning of the seizure. Then there is the middle of the seizure which is the seizure itself. Again, there are some physical changes, there are some emotional or changes of awareness or some behavioral changes. The seizure per se, it includes different types of seizures manifest in a different way. It could be just in the form of frequent eye blinking, lip smacking. In neonatal period, we call it subtle seizures which manifest only in the form of staring look, subtle some change in activity. Again, lip smacking, even frequent yawning in a newborn sometimes is the manifestation of a seizure. In older children, seizures could be, as I said, all these like lip smacking, some facial movements, eye blinking or generalized tightness of all the extremities. Sometimes excessive sweating, loss of consciousness, loss of awareness, fall on the ground and associated with incontinence, excessive salivation or drooling at mouth associated with basically impaired awareness of the surrounding. The third and the last phase of a seizure is the end of the seizure. End of the seizure again after the middle portion or after the seizure has occurred there are some hours which last few 15-20 minutes to maybe up to 24 hours also where the patient feels depressed, sad, confused, low, what mother describes is he is not himself after some hours after the seizure has stopped. The patient has a feeling of lowness, sadness, depression, sometimes ashamed of what has happened, also has some lightheadedness, headache, irritability, generalized weakness, exhaustion, sometimes they have excessive thirst. This is how the seizure ends. So the beginning, middle and the end of the seizure is defined as the whole seizure activity and repeated such episodes over few days, months or even on the same day is labeled as epilepsy. Now what causes seizures? In two thirds of patients the cause is unknown. In remaining in pediatric, the causes differ by age. In the newborn period, the most common causes decrease oxygen supply to the brain during the delivery period. Secondly, decreased levels of glucose, calcium, magnesium, 
some electrolyte disturbances, some inborn errors of metabolism, sometimes intracranial hemorrhage that is bleeding inside the brain during delivery for different causes and last but not least maternal drug abuse. All these can cause seizures in a newborn period. In children slightly older, toddlers and older children, it could be febrile seizures which can be a cause of epilepsy in the late age. Then trauma to the head, stroke, injuries to brain by any form, tumours of the brain and some genetic diseases. Now what are the risk factors for epilepsy in children? As I said the commonest cause was in the neonatal period decreased oxygen supply to the brain because of some issue happened during the labour. We call it perinatal insult. So this is the most common cause of epilepsy in children. Other causes are brain infections, brain tumours, stroke, some inborn errors of metabolism, febrile seizure or patients who were born small for gestation who have had a history of seizures in the first month of life or in the neonatal period. A family history of seizures slightly increases the risk and also a patient who presented with status epilepticus or repeated prolonged seizures. All these have a risk of epilepsy. Now, patients who are diagnosed with epilepsy and are on treatment already, there are certain triggers which exaggerate or which increase the risk of having breakthrough seizures or repeated seizures. First is if the patient is on medication but is not taking the drug regularly. If it, the medication is missed often or the compliance is poor, then there are chances that the seizures get triggered. Secondly, prolonged fasting periods, dehydration, lack of sleep, stress, for example, exam related stress. Exam going children, they are mentally stressed because of the exams, they are sleep deprived, they don't eat at proper time intervals. All these things, they trigger a seizure and so lead to breakthrough convulsions in an epileptic patient. One important question is that, is one always epileptic? Now, 74% 74 74 of children become seizure free within two years, two to three years at the most, just with one or at the most second anti-epileptic drug started. And only 9% of children with epilepsy have uncontrolled epilepsy. So one doesn't always have epilepsy. In two, three years of time, 74% of them get controlled and they are, most of them are off medications as well. There are certain myths about epilepsy. I would just want to highlight the myths and tell you the facts parallelly. Now the first myth is that epilepsy is contagious. The fact is, remember epilepsy does not spread from one person to another like a common cold. It is not contagious. Second myth is that children with epilepsy are disabled and they cannot attend school or cannot do their regular routine activities as their peers can do. This is a myth. Let me clarify, children with epilepsy have normal intelligence except for some causes or some etiologies of epilepsy wherein there are some brain related or some behavioral illnesses. Otherwise, these children can go and attend normal school, normal activities. As they grow, they can even go and work with regular normal people. In fact, there are good number of celebrities who are epileptics. Alexander the Great was an epileptic. Secondly, John T. Rhodes, the famous cricketer, was an epileptic. The famous author Charles Dickens also was epileptic. Also, the pianist Elton John suffered from epilepsy. There are many other names, athletes, singers, rap artists, which were epileptics and they led a very normal life all throughout. Another common myth is that epilepsy is a disease of insanity or it is a mental illness or some people say it happens because of position of demons. It is a myth. Epilepsy is not 
a mental illness as i said it is a, Ill, a illness which occurs because of repeated seizures and seizure occurs because of a temporary alteration in the electrical activity of the brain so it is not insanity it is not a mental illness and it doesn't occur because of possession by demons or anything and the last myth is that you can swallow your tongue if you get an epileptic seizure the fact is it is physically impossible to swallow one's own tongue irrespective of what happens whether you throw a seizure you fall on the ground you injure yourself yes you can have a tongue bite but you cannot physically swallow your tongue during a seizure so this was a highlight on the myths and the related facts about epilepsy there are certain do's and don'ts during an active seizure attack or you can call it as first aid during a seizure attack first i would talk about the do's during a seizure attack first and foremost do roll the patient or the child on one side secondly give a soft pillow underneath the head for support thirdly loosen some tightened clothings or if there is some thing put into the neck like a chain or something you should loosen it so that the child doesn't get suffocated during the seizure if the child or the patient is moving see to it that you clear away any dangerous objects kept in the surroundings <clears throat> also stay with the patient till medical help arrives try to closely observe the child or the patient while he or she is seizing so that you can give the minutest of the details to the medical person when he or she arrives these days you can record it on your cell phone in the video camera so that you give the exact type of the seizure and exact detail of the seizure to the concerned medical person also if possible just time the seizure just keep a watch on your wrist watch as to when did the episode start and when did it end so that you can again tell the detailed duration of the seizure to the medical person if the patient has injured himself or herself please do not leave the place and stay till help arrives you might need an ambulance if the child has injured himself now some important don'ts during a seizure activity first and foremost is do not panic i repeat the most important don't which is never taken care of is do not panic stay calm and then address the issue as i said we know all the do's during a seizure now the don'ts are again i repeat do not panic secondly do not put anything in the mouth of the patient no spoon no pencil no key that is not going to prevent anything just you have already rolled the child to one side so do not try to put anything inside the mouth do not sprinkle water on the face or on the body parts do not shout and try to talk to the patient or try to try to arouse the child by screaming and shouting and do not hold the person down just let the seizure go away stay calm till medical help arises if in a short duration the child throws a second seizure then please call for help and ask somebody to rush to bring an ambulance or to shift the child to the nearby hospital thank you